Hello and welcome to Flash Animation, or rather Animation Flash, um, Lesson 3, specifically 2-26. Now I'm starting with number 1 where it says click on frame 5, etc, etc, and what I've done is I've pulled up my solution, so I'm already starting with that arrow, so this would be kind of your uh, beginning position. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I've, I have it selected. Right, so I've used my selection tool again, and I want to do edit, and I want to do copy, and then I want to do edit, and then I want to do uh, paste and center. So I paste a copy of that. Now what's interesting is when I have it selected, very similar to anything else we've worked with, I can actually use my down arrow, my right arrow, my left arrow to actually move this around by keyboard. You'll notice also when I have this particular arrow selected, I have the position and size open here on the right hand side. The X coordinate I can, pardon me just for a moment, the X coordinate I can come over here and I can type in 450 and what it'll do is it'll move things as appropriate. And then I can do my Y coordinate as indicated on number, number 8 and I can put in 30, and I can push enter. So now I have the item in the exact right place. It says, now drag a marquee around the left arrow object. So all I'm doing here is I'm actually selecting this particular arrow, and then I'm changing the values to 36 and 30. Now you'll note that my object, my arrows are already 36 and 30, but you could simply change it to that, double click on it, make the modifications as appropriate. Um, Let's see, we're going to click our free transform tool, which looks like this, and you'll notice the free transform tool then appears around it. Now, the the page on page 2-27, they talk about uh, moving things. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with transforming. So I can actually grab it like that. I can grab it here, do like that. I can grab in the middle and I can change my middle so I know my rotation point on which it rests. If I so choose, I can make it smaller, I can make it larger, and then of course I could just control Z it all the way back to normal. Right, so here we go. The other thing I can do, as it indicates in Flash 2-27, number 3, is says click the scale option. And remember when I have objects selected here, below this line right here, excuse me, a menu option selected here, uh, below this item here, I have something called, let's say, the scale option, which is right here. Um, now what I can do is I can modify that, since I have my scale, and drag each corner handle towards and then away from the center of the object. So I could actually grab this, right? So it actually makes it larger or smaller because the scale is locked in. So I can modify the scale as appropriate. And then, of course, I can edit, undo scale, set it back to normal. It's all good. All right, so and of course I can continue with my scaling options, uh, dragging it down, you know, control Z, blah, blah, blah. All right, so now we have our options here. The next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to choose our free transform tool and we're going to choose this bad boy right here with this one selected. Now, what it wants to do, and I actually have selected the wrong one, I'm a bad person, so I'm going to select this one, now I have it, and now what I do is for my free transform under rotate, I'm going to go ahead and put a 45 in there. So there's my 45 degrees. And let's see, then click and drag the upper middle hand to the right. So, um, what I can actually do then is if I want to, you'll notice if I take my mouse pointer, what it's saying is, as I take it here, I see that little circle. I can actually drag this around and modify values as appropriate. I could also come in here and change it to whatever I want it to be. Um, so I can also do this. I can change my selection tool so I know I have still selected. And then I do Window. And then I come down to transform. There's my transform options, meaning my transforms option. Then I put in 45 degrees. And I've already had mine open, so you can kind of see. So on one hand, you can actually move it around with the uh, options. The other hand, you're actually seeing the values put in. Um, 
we can also do this. It says draw a marquee by the arrow in the upper left corner. So what I'm doing is I'm changing what arrow I'm selected. And then I want to do modify. And I want to do transform. And then I want to do flip horizontal. So what I'm doing is I'm flipping it back the other direction, which is, you know, pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to do my upper right arrow. I'm, I'm, I'm on flash 2-29, number one, using zoom, subsection, and selection tools. So I want to go ahead and I want to select this bad boy here. So I have it. And then I want to edit, copy, edit paste and center. And I'm just getting a, a number, excuse me, an arrow there to actually mess with. And I'm going to try to, oh, there we go. So now I've put it back to normal. Now in this particular case they're telling you to zoom in. However, you don't necessarily need to zoom in. I'm going to hit my subsection tool, click on it, and I should have, you see how my mouse pointer turns from an arrow to a solid dot and then I could take it here and it's that um, open dot there. What that's indicating is is I can actually grab on that handle and size out that part of it. The next thing I want to do is I want to draw now and of course you can modify this way beyond what it's talking about. But that allows that subsection tool here allows me to change the individual tool where this selection tool is basically I'm taking the whole thing as a group and you notice it still has the let me just undo that here undo this it still has both the fill and the swatch in it and if I want to take it all highlight it all grab it now I've got it all as one big group and then I can also control Z back to my non messed up arrow the next thing I want to do is I actually want to draw I want to draw a circle that is that I can modify and let's see I want to use the object drawing I want to do the oval tool and I'm going to use my shift button and I'm going to draw something that looks like this now what I can actually do is I can grab my selection tool and if I take my mouse pointer over to the side right here I can left click and hold and I can drag it right here and you'll notice that allow me to change the size of the oval and of course I'm, I can certainly change it in many many weird ways uh, far beyond what it is and of course you to move it back to normal and that was the end of 2-29 specifically figure uh, 39 that gives you an example of that all right so it says on page 2-30 insert a new layer above layer 6 which is this would be this layer 7 and frame 30 so I'm on layer 7 frame 30 there's nothing on it what I want to do is I want to get the rectangle primitive tool and the rectangle primitive tool is going to allow me to make further modifications to the rectangle so what I do is I come along my oval tool I choose rectangle primitive after choosing rectangle primitive I all right, so I come along, I can reset this, so it all goes back to normal because I've messed with it. And that reset tool has a tendency to reset it all. Now what I want to do is I want to use my rectangle tool like this. So here's my rectangle tool. And if I take my selection tool and I grab the upper right corner handle, which is this one, as I drag it in, you'll notice I'm actually changing the way that uh, particular square looks and I can edit undo change primitive now one of the things that I did when I created this is I didn't hold my shift key in order to create a good solid rectangle oh, excuse me square I actually made kind of rectangle so if I click my shift oh poo let me undo that bad boy Boop. all right so I'm gonna reset it so I lose all these values and now when I draw it, I put my shift key so I actually draw a real rectangle. And now if I come along with my selection tool like I was doing, I draw it in. And I'm actually turning it into a square. You notice before I had two handles there indicating that I had more of a rectangle effect. This is now moving away from that. And if I push reset, it'll all go back to normal. Um, slowly drag the slider in the rectangle options area to the right until the radius changes to 100. So I want to... Now it's huge, and it's not the one. So I want to change this one, and I want to change it to radius 100. So basically, that turns it into a circle. And if I reset it, it goes back to normal. Now, if I come along and 
I want to click the radius so they're no longer locked. Type negative 60 in the upper left. Right? And then I type negative 60 over here. That'll give me something that looks similar to this. And if I want to set that back to normal, I push reset. All right, so in each one of those cases, I put it, put it back together and it's good. Um, now I want to unlock it again since I've reset it. Set the upper left corner radius to 60 and the lower right corner to 60. So now I have something that looks similar to that right there. It's kind of a, I don't even know what that, a way to describe that. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw another rectangle, right? another primitive object, but this one's going to be oval primitive. And our oval primitive looks similar to this. It's going to end up being a circle. Now, I have some things set, so I'm going to reset it so it turns back to a normal circle. It says, now I want to drag the start angle slider and the end angle slider to view the effects. So I'm on page uh, 2-31, number 17. So I want to do the start angle and the end angle. Now, you don't have to make the sound effects like I did, but this gives you an idea of you can modify things appropriately. And I'm going to do a reset to set it all back to normal. Now, if I look at the inner radius, right, and I'm going to reset it to 30. So I put 30 and I push enter and that puts it right there. And <clears throat> I'm going to set the stroke value to 12. And you notice now I end up with a bullseye because what happened is, is I changed the inner radius and then I changed the outside to 12 point. So in each one of those cases now it got bigger like a target area. So in reference to lesson three, we messed with objects, we worked with drawn objects, we rotated it, we played around with the borders, right? And we, we decided on some different elements to work with. You know, we started with these, so we were actually copying it, making it longer, flipping it, going in a circle, changing it, and then we actually went over here, oh, excuse me, we went to here, and then we created another triangle. Uh, we draw, drew it with the uh, primitive, then we pulled in the side so we can modify it that way. Then we did a primitive circle, and we modified it that way. So in each one of these cases, we had different modifications specifically to do with scaling, changing, rotating, uh, and that kind of continues our working with objects flare. All right, well, that concludes Lesson 3. Thank you very much for your time. And that covered oh, Flash 226, 227, 28, 29, 30, and 31. As always, if you have any questions for me, let me know. Thank you very much for your time.